Welcome everyone. Today, the presentation, we are going to explain the minimum requirement for the electrical design for a residential and industrial project. During this presentation, we're going to have a high level look how can we advance our electrical design at the same time save cost during construction and ensure high power security and adequate maintenance requirement for the future let's start before we start uh, these are the standard or the references that I relied on during the preparation of my slides. Electric comfort. Why electricity is very important to human? Why? Number one, provide electric comfort. What's a project? Before, imagine during cold or heat weather, there is no buildings. The buildings offer advanced comfort conditions. Provide a shelter for the sun, wind, rain, heat. Also, with the mechanical project, to introduce a comfort zone for us. Air conditioning uh, for a large buildings could be an elevators, could be a lot of other mechanical devices. And then electricity form one of the main bonds when it comes to human comfort in buildings, industrial, and even outside. So with a proper electrical and computer engineering network, I can make sure that my building is smart and advanced enough for it to communicate throughout the other buildings. So if I design an adequate system, I will make sure that my building becomes like a life structure where it communicate with the others. At the same time, maintain high security level of electrical power continuous. No. This will give us a conclusion. This will give us a conclusion that there will be always joint project between civil, mechanical, and electrical. We cannot run away from this joint project. Therefore, it's very important, as we will see during our presentation today, that we work together effectively from the beginning of the project throughout the different stages. This is a power station. It will show that the power stations, whoever worked in a power station before, also shows that it relies heavily on mechanical aspect, the steam pressure, the cooling of the steams, the buildings, the infrastructure, the heavy weight that the infrastructure needs to support, it's actually very connected. What's a joint project? Could be joint project between electric and computers, civil and mechanical could be run for a small project to a large project to a more complex project. Uh, what defines smart project or sustainable project? What defines an advanced smart electrical system? This is very important for me. Guys, the sustainability. Sustainability, especially beyond COVID-19 pandemic, sustainability is going to be one of the most important aspects to achieve in building 
industrial in all our lifestyle for the future. Also, advanced smart electric system makes our life easier, give us more profit, ensure the sustainable project is maintained. We will see how. It's very important for me, whenever I think these days, I will have a proper communication protocol between all types of aspects. This communication protocol requires a path which is, will be offered to us by the project. Also required an advanced algorithm provided to us by our colleague in the computer divisions. Required a strong understanding of the power flow, how we are going to talk, what language, voltage, current, power, reactive power, active power. It's very important for us to make sure that this is sustainable, at the same time it's a smart. This is very important. Sustainable for a long time. At the same time, it's a smart to make sure that we achieve beyond the desired, beyond the desired outcome. <clears throat> At the end, as the technology develops, we will be able to provide a full solution where every building can communicate, where we introduce a stronger or more friendlier, more sustainable environment for everyone. Before we go further, what's the definition of intelligence? If you go look, intelligent capacity for logic, I can advance my logic, I can have a capacity, I can expand my capacity for logic. Understanding. I need to be able to understand the current situation, the past situation, and start preparing my self-awareness for any developed conditions. Learn. We keep learning as we go, irrespective of how many years of experience you have. Every project will give you a bit of learning or maybe a large chunk of learning. But we do keep learning throughout our life. Planning, it's very important for the intelligence to be able to plan in advance. Creativity is part of the intelligence. I can be more creative. We can see nowadays that creativity can go beyond our expectation. Problem solving. No. For me, I need to focus on the problem solving. I want my electrical system, my building, to be able to offer, when I come to advanced system, a problem solving by itself. And this is very, very viable because of the introduced or the introduction of industrial revolution for machine learning, artificial intelligence, smart grid, advanced power electronic switches. Smart electric system. When I come to smart electric system, I need to make sure that there is a capacity, there is a planning. These two make the core of my building or industrial electrical design. I need to make sure that my capacity can be covered or I have the capacity into my design to cover the required level. Planning. I need to plan, is there any future development required? Is there any future expansion in the radar? This area, is there a spare land or a spare planning that will be developed? One of the most important ability to solve a problem is that major disturbance. Yani if I have a building, for example, 100 stories, 100 level. Every time I'm going to work on one level, do I have to turn everything off? No. That's very bad. If I want to work on one item, I don't have to close or switch off everything. That's why, during my design, I need to take into consideration the ability 
to solve a problem with that major disturbance. That's why whenever I design, this is will apply into power system. They apply N minus one reliability. That means I always have one spare available to support under fault. If you have a very, very critical area, you can apply the concept of N minus two. I have two backup ready to straight away support the system under fault, malfunction, or when there is a planned outage. Advanced, advanced smart electric system. Capacity for self logic With the introduction of renewable energy and the advancement into power electronics and machine learning artificial intelligence, these steps are very advanced at this stage. And it is expected to be more advanced in the near, very near future. Our problem solving that's currently with the advancement into the machine learning, this is very viable these days. System integrity, it's very important when I design my electric system. So if I'm designing a house or I'm designing a building, I need to make sure that I have an ethical responsibility regarding my client. I need to make sure that my system has a capacity, can maintain the capacity. Under major disturbance, I need to design the system to minimize the impact. I have a lot of responsibility regarding this requirements. If it's an industrial area, I don't want to have a faulty need that I need to shut down my entire warehouse. That's cost a lot of money. Reliability, security, it's very important. At the same time, the quality, ability to problem solving, faster problem solving, low disturbance, this element must be embedded into your project planning. And you must be able to ask your electrical designer these questions. As a project owner, tell me what's my security level for my supply? If there's any fault, what's my disturbance like? This is very reasonable and valid question to ask. Electrical design for a residential property. Now, in our residential property, we have low voltage. You have to distinguish between the requirement. There is a low voltage design. There is also, in here, you will see, there is also high voltage as we're going to go through. For industrial, you have a low voltage and a high voltage. Every single design have a skills requirement, which is are different. In many countries, they set sections or qualification or training to work on high voltage or to work on low voltage design or installation. So, for residential electrical, I have to focus on the main distribution board, on the sub-distribution board. This main distribution board could be massive or could be small in size, depending on your design. Could have capacity for logic, could have a capacity to minimize the disturbance under fault condition to your project. Also, the sub-distribution board also has the same ability. These both will have the advanced ability if the design and the planning of the electrical system is being taken into consideration using a critical thinking. You will see when I come to sketches. Wiring system. In the wiring system, as you will see, it will have major impact when it comes to capacity. 
Remember the capacity that we spoke about? It's very important, this one, two, three, to make sure main distribution board has a capacity. Spare capacity, that's very important, has the ability to minimize disturbance under fault condition, under maintenance, minimize the disturbance. Same for the sub distribution board. Wiring system, exactly the same. And so on. The E, the extra low voltage, which is other communication and fire services, also need to be coordinated with this. You don't want under fault this to be impacted. That's why the disturbance must be lowered. You have a high voltage system as well, which is which are represented by the mini substations or the small substations that convert the high voltage into low voltage for building or residential uh, residential or industrial purposes. Main substation supply if required. Now, industrial electric design. Also, you will have low voltage electric design, which is include rotational machine. You'll have a problem with the power factor, high current, and you have high voltage industrial, high voltage design, safety considerations surrounding high voltage infrastructure. Into the industry, you could have rotation machine with high power. Choosing the rotation machine will have a major impact on the power factor. That's why this, you must keep on an eye on the, your power factor. You might have to design a power factor, power factor correction device. You will have high current. If you have low voltage, high power, you could have high current. So the cable, the interference, the separation, the heat, the derating, all this must be taken into consideration. When it comes to high voltage, the high voltage infrastructure is located within your compound. I need to make sure that I have a safety consideration surrounding high voltage infrastructure. This high voltage infrastructure, as you will see now, also, also could be located at your residential building. Clearance zone is very important to maintain and always maintain clear. Now, let's start with an example. I have a residential project. For example, small one, 120 apartments. First of all, I need to obtain the maximum demand. That's a very important capacity. Remember now, I need to start to link my discussion to what, what, what I explained before. Capacity, maximum demand. Where do I get my maximum demand? Where? I need to go to my client. My client, let's say you have a developer. The de developer has different section, civil, mechanical, structural, architect, electrical, all this. So I go back, see confirmation. I need to go to a mechanical design, ask him, hold on a second. Do you have a chiller, for example, to cool down the building? Or do you have a standalone, separate air, co air conditioning? <clears throat> the size of your lift, the motor of your lift. The lightings, I go back to the civil and architect. <clears throat> and I have to go to utility and municipality for capacity. So for this one, I need to get the air conditioning, pump, fan, elevators, etc. The fire, the most likely under the mechanical section. I have to go to the civil and architect design where I get all the appliances that will be embedded inside your building or your industry. Civil layout, because it's very important to understand the rise out there the safety requirement. I need to get the civil layout of the building because you will see when it comes to the high voltage substation outside or inside the building, I need to be able to design the in and out with minimal disturbance. I go to utility because the utility, I need to see the information. The utility will tell me, is there a sufficient power in the street or do I need a substation? The substation size is based on my maximum demand, which is based on this. Can you see now it's an it's an interlock chain? They all link together. I cannot 
design an acceptable electrical system without the input from the architect, civil, mechanical, local authority, utility, network on the outside surrounding the area for the utility. So maximum demand. Many countries have a standard and procedures. Other countries rely on electrical design to determine this. So irrespective, if you follow this type or that type, you have to make sure that you design an acceptable capacity. For example, if my system required one megawatt, I shouldn't ask him to supply or to design for a three megawatt. And if my system required one megawatt, I shouldn't go for a 900 kilowatt. I should always have a buffer in my design. I don't want to gold plate my, my, my network from one meg. I design for three meg and the client will pay for the extra charges for all this extra cost required to achieve the three megawatt requirement. At the same time, I don't want to save money on my client and reduce it. And at the end, I will go into major issues. Maximum demand. Guys, maximum demand is when I get the load. This is very important element for diversity factor. The diversity factor, for example, if I have, if I have 70 light, every light is 10 watt LED. The diversity factor tells me that 65% of this light will be on at the same time. And that makes sense. The 70 light in your house or in your apartment or in your building is not going to be all of it on at the same time. Same when it comes to an equipment, fridge, oven. Do you, do you turn the oven all of it on at the same time? Let's say you have a 2.2 kilowatt. Do you turn all your plates on at the same time while everything in the oven? If you have an oven, have a cooktop and an oven device. Do you turn everything on at the same time? Remember, guys, you're designing for the entire building. So if one unit, apartment, turn this on all of it, is 120 going to turn it on at the same time? Air, cost, air conditioning. Is the air conditioning working exactly at a full capacity at the same time? For the entire building? So with the diversity, you will have, you can use the diversity and you will have a maximum demand per unit. So the total connected current base can be calculated using an acceptable power factor. Another approach, they don't care about the diversity factor. They just added everything as it is. So they all the connected load, they add them together, and at the end, you will end up with a connected load of 9.3 kilowatt per unit, which is then you can calculate the count. Now, <clears throat> I have now two approaches. I have total power of 876 kilowatt with diversity factor. I have 1.16 megawatt without the diversity factor. Which means my client need to upgrade. This is, could be 1 megawatt substation. This could be 1.5 megawatt substation. So they need to upgrade. They need to pay more money. Now, this exists if your entire building, if the entire building, Everything in the building is on at the same time at full capacity, which means cooktop. If you have four plate cooktop, four of them on at maximum power. Turn it on maximum, all of them. Oven. If you have oven plate on top and bottom, all of them on. All your lights, all your air conditioning, everything. All your dishwasher, washing machine, everything. All your lighting for the entire building. You will see that this is. Even this one, when you say 80%, most likely will be less. So this stuff, you need to consider it. We talk about 120 apartments. Imagine you have 1,000 apartments in a block. 
this is will be big difference. Will be big difference. Big difference. And the amount of copper cabling, you will increase the cost by a huge number. You could add an extra million or a two million dollars to a big project if you don't take the proper diversity factor. Now, this is from the Australian standard. You can say every light, they only allow, if you have 21 or more living unit per phase, 0 0.5 per unit. Amps, only for light. If I go to the heating and air conditioning, 75%. So this diversity factor, 75%. The previous one from Dubai, the diversity factor, if you go to Dubai assessment, in Australian standard, they allow you for this. 75% of connected unit. Fixed space heating, or air conditioning, sauna, socket outlet latent, more than 10 amps, or the other connection which is explained below. So it's very important to follow this. I never use 100%. I never seen a standard that will let you or will recommend you to use 100% of the connected power. So now, this all the stuff can be easily done by applying an Excel file. So what I've done is, I created an Excel file based on a strain standard, and I plug in all the numbers. So all I have to do is, number of units, 120, and then I start putting up all this information. Excel file will automatically do it. There's an equation. See this? If I go and put it, Automatically everything will change. So it's 300 units. I'll go down. So everything. Or I can use my colleague that has advanced skills in computer software to write me a program. What I all I do is I enter 300 unit and automatically this will change. Actually, I can also set up in Excel if I want to to make a proper one. And everything will change. Will tell me outlet how many current, and then at the end, I need a thousand M. Will tell me all the information. See this? This is a total card. So as you can see, standard helped me to do this. And when I follow a standard where I live or work. It would be easier if there's any dispute in the future. Hold on a second. I followed the standard step by step. And this is a verification of the standard. That means that mean the client can no longer go back and change the requirement after you start the design. Because changing any requirement, changing, for example, the cooking appliances detail, the air conditioning details, all this information, the type of air conditioning, take it from, for example, from 2 kilowatt to 4 kilowatt, it will change everything. Is the hot water based on electricity or gas? If it was a design based on gas and suddenly now you want to take it back into electricity, it's a major problem, especially when I have five to 600 units. So, practicing more will give you better understanding about the requirement to ensure my capacity is correct. This is number one. You can see now, I need to set my foundation right. I need to say, hold on a second. Same as when you do the foundation for the building. I need 10 megawatt. So now I need to build my foundation for 10 megawatt and I need to allow the infrastructure inside to distribute this 10 megawatt. If I design, I need one megawatt, I need to build a smaller foundation for one megawatt for power infrastructure, foundation for electric infrastructure, and then to distribute the one megawatt. So at the end, 
after I put all my system, it will give me my total current, and then I go back and design my electric system. Next step. The next step, hold on now. Let's say I need 10 megawatt. I go to utility. I need 10 megawatt or 1 megawatt, 5 megawatt system to support this, this building. These are my evidence and these are my standards that I followed. The utility, I need to check with the electric utility regarding available power to support the proposed development. A new substation might be required. Major high voltage work might be required. Depending on your system. So if you go back too high up on maximum demand, you might have major high voltage requirement. If you go down too much, it might it might not be might, might not be good enough to support your design project. The following diagram will explain. I have the utility. Go back to a substation. Goes back to electric room, goes back to your apartment. My design, it's gonna start. This is responsibility of your project. If you have to put a substation, it's your responsibility to obtain appropriate design or pay the utility to do this. And this substation required you to provide a piece of land, required an infrastructure for in and out. We'll see now. Now, Australian utility, tell us the type of kiosk required. Every type of kiosk has a maximum power that can provide. Look, I have high voltage end and I have low voltage end. This high voltage end would have an in and out. In here, you would have a transformer. This will go to the building. So I need to complete the ring of my design. I have an in and out. To complete the ring, I cannot break the ring of my design. So let's say I have a 11 kilovolt running like this. If I have a new project and this is my substation, I break this knee, take it in and out. And all this area, Will be will have fully controlled authority for the utility. That's why the in and out of the high voltage, the low voltage side, it's under your control. Because the low, low, low voltage side supports your area. Now, for the different type of chaos, different type of substation, I have different clearance. Look, one one point three meters. 1.6 meters, 1.5 meters, 600, kilo, 600, 1.6. I have different type of cars. If this is going on the road, this is on the road. If you go, I've seen it in Australia, I've seen it in Dubai, I've seen it in a lot of countries. This is the street. You will have a, this is, this is, your, this is your boundary. You will have like this. And that's where you place your substation. So when it comes in here, I need to be able to take my cable if it's coming like that, and then it goes like this. This high voltage voltage need to go to my building. So it's very important for me to coordinate this in and out with other services. Separation between high voltage and other services, every country has a standard. Could be 450 mil, could be 500 mil, could be 600 mil. Separation between cable and stormwater, between cable and telestra, between cable and communications, stormwater, sewer. As you can see, different types will have different requirements. Four and a half. 205, 4500, 1600. See, it's completely different. 5.2 still the same, but look at this white width. So now I have to make sure 
that. When I come to my layout, I have an area suitable for this. And the area need to be closer to the high voltage available infrastructure if it exists, because I don't want to do high, a uh, lot of work. Let's, let me give you an example. This is your block. This is your street. In here, you have a high voltage cable. You have in here, you have an 11 kilovolt or 22 kilovolt. Your building, for example, if you tell them, I want to put the substation in here, that means you have to provide a like this. This path is going to be full accessible by the utility. So basically, they share the ownership. Also, this is cost a lot of money. Or I go ahead and I design my system to be to locate in here. This is my stuff. So only I do like this, and I only give them access. This is their area. So it will never interfere with me. Now, when I come to the low voltage now, the low voltage side, I need, I shouldn't have the electrical in here. Shouldn't. Why? Because then I need to find a somewhere, some way, like this. This is have a high current, very high current. That's why my preference to have the electrical like this. This is my electrical. <coughs> Because taking it from one side to another side, it's going to cross a lot of infrastructure. Could be steel infrastructure, could be water, storm water, a lot of services. And I need to maintain my separation. I need to provide fire rating cable. It's cost a lot of money. The longer the cable, the larger the voltage drop, bigger the cable required, more cost more money. Just because the electrical engineer did not coordinate with the architect and the civil and the mechanical at the area stage. That's very important, guys. This is cost a lot of money if you don't plan it at the beginning. It's not only the money, it's also the requirements. It's also the requirements that whenever you have an electric, main electric infrastructure, you have to be very careful about the clearest zone for it. You have to be very careful about this because it could cost you a lot of money when it comes to civil additional work. Also, civil requirement depend on the type of the cars. You have to make sure this is my in, my out, along with the civil is appropriate. Is appropriate with my utility requirements. Now, I need to go now, after I finish bringing the cable requirement for the electric room, I need to go to the appliance. Okay, now, I brought the power to my electric room from the substation. The electric room, I need now to take it to the power. The cable that comes from the, from the substation that I just finished, how do I take it to my apartment? I need to use a riser. I need to be able to take it down from the bottom where the electric room all the way up. Now, depending on your size of the project, you could decide to have multiple electric room. But I respect it. If you have 10 electric room, if you have one, you should have the same logic that we're going to discuss now. This is an electric riser. It's going to go up. Single rising main. What's the advantage of this? Individual floor load I balance. I balance out the electric load. That's fine. I have a small low voltage is required. At the beginning here on the bottom, where my electric room, I have a small, smaller board. Why? Because I have only one output of it. One output goes into here and in every floor. I have a subboard that will feed the room. That's good. 
Simple in construction and operation. Very simple. One switch in here goes up. In here will spread. Will spread. Disadvantage. Supply security, guys. Look, hold on a second. I have a fault in here. I lost everything. I have a fault in here. I lost all this. Low supply security. I have a maintenance on this location. I have to turn everything on. Or this connection, this subboard in here, need to be designed with sufficient clearance for life work. Need to be designed for life work. So under maintenance to minimize the disturbance. Remember, guys, what we spoke before is <laughs> minimize the disturbance. Logic for capacity. We spoke about the capacity map. Now, I need to minimize my disturbance. Okay. Maintenance could also require full power outage. So, this system, cheaper, small board, very low security. I have this electric room. I will have three mains. This main supply my two floor. The other main supply three floors, and the other main supply the other three floors. What's this one? Easier mounting, smaller size for rising main. This is the mains. Now this is the main the cable. Smaller in size because this cable supporting now two floor. If you see the previous one. One main, one cable is going to support the entire floor. Disadvantage. A fault into any riser affects several floors. If I have a fault into any riser, let's say I have a fault into this riser, I lose the three floor. Okay, security is better than the other one, but I still not have high security level. Also, any maintenance on this riser, or this riser, or this riser will affect the connected floor. So far, so good. Large power distribution, larger power distribution board. I need now the distribution board need to be bigger than the previous one. I have this system. So I have the electric. I have a very large distribution board. Every floor, I have one cable to every floor. Smaller cable size, of course, this cable will be smaller because this cable now is supplying only one uh, floor. Under fault condition, only one cable, one, one will be affected. Only one floor will be affected. Which means now I have higher security for supply. Disadvantage, it's very hard to balance out the three phase power on this condition. This, the riser main for big load on each floor, the riser main now, I need to choose my cable, this riser main, for the peak of every floor. For the peak of every floor, large number of cables. Imagine you have 64 floors, 100 floors. I need to have 100 cables. As you will see, the cable setup and layout, I mean, I have a higher or a bigger riser, more complex wiring system, larger distribution board, very large distribution board. Now, advantages. Now, I can have like this setup. Higher power supply security. Let's say I have a fault in here. I isolate this area. This will be supplied like that. And I close the switch to supply this. So I lose only this area under fault. So it has higher security. Supply security. 
smaller distribution board. This distribution board on the bed at the bottom has only two inputs, two outputs, two. We've seen before, instead of having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight outputs for every four, one output, now I have two. The difference loading, the different loading of the vision flow are balanced out. I can manage to balance this one out. Disadvantage. I need two horizons. Because if I put them in the same riser, any fault on the one riser or any file on the one riser, I will damage both of them. If I'm working on one riser, I might have to have an issue. So, more work is required. I have a new device. More work is, 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 is required. Additional cable and part is required. I have this cable and this cable. Two risers, that means more work is required. More equipment is required. Cable tray is required. Double feed supply. Advantages. High power su supply. Same as before. If I have a fault in me, I lose only one floor. I will lose one floor. It's good. However, same, very small supply. Now, when it comes to disadvantages, I have, I need two electric rice. This and this. I need a substation and a substation if this is a transformer. Two transformers, wow, it costs a lot of money. So, two electric prices. In reality, in reality, in here, I have another room to take this, another electric room to take it down as well. More work is required, additional cable and part is required, of course. And as I showed you, uh, the transformer requirement on the substation is very critical and tricky. Now, industrial low voltage design. This is what's for the buildings. Let's have a quick look on the industrial low voltage design. In the industry, I have lightings, general power, and mainly electric machine could be a dominant factor. What's an electric machine, guys? The presence of the rotational machines introduce additional electric requirement. What's a rotation machine? For those who study electric machine, they know that the rotation machine is an inductor. When I have an inductor, I have an impact on the power factor by introducing a reactive component. Details of motor and its connection should also be studied. Mechanical team should work closely with the electric team to reduce the project cost. This is very critical when it comes to an industrial. These motors, if they don't have, if they don't have a soft starter controller for their motors, that means at the start they will have a spike in power. Unfortunately, good news that for us almost most of these devices now have a soft starter or valuable frequency drive to control the input current. Induction motors and synchronous motors. You guys should know that induction motors can only have lagging power factor. The synchronous motor can be designed for a unity lagging or leading This is the power factor. Let me explain to you one element, and I'm pretty sure you all know it. Only real power will be converted into torque into the motor. So, this is the power that requires the current. So, I'm driving more current. However, only the current represented in the green arrow will be converted into torque. Example. You have been asked to design the electric system for a warehouse to support the following. Lighting system for an area of 4,000 square meters, 12 motors of 100 kilowatt three phase, 10 operating during working hours, and two hours on standby. Eight motors of 150 kilowatt three phase, six operating during working hours, and two hours on standby. 
I need to design this. This is my system. I have an additional general power capacity of 30 kilowatt in three phase. Now, if this is a completely new design from scratch, you should be able to put, give a input regarding the chosen type of motors. Regarding the cho chosen type of motors, also that you can choose the type of lighting. So during working hours, all light will be operational. Therefore, the diversity factor for the light is one, except the emergency light will be off. So for this one, if you want to have a logic, I can say, hold on a second. I need to have all of them on. Unless your design could have a spare for 20%. So you can say 0 0.8. During working hours, the motor diversity factor is 0 0.8. I have 12, for example, or well, I have 10, 8 out of them will be working, 0 0.8 something. If it is acceptable to use a diversity factor of 0 0.8 for the general power, as we saw in the standard, it is acceptable. Actually, you can use 0 0.75 if you want, but let's say 0 0.8. Total power required is 1.934 megawatt. If I go ahead, and I added this together, I end up, I need 1.934 megawatt worth of power. Power factor close to one. What's a power factor close to one? I need lagging and leading power factor. At the same time, if I keep having lagging power factor, if I keep having lagging power factor, this will go up like this. But if I have leading, this leading, will then take it down, so I have like this. So, the lagging and the leading power factor will control the component that goes up. Choose motor characteristic and system power factor. Assume the design aim for 0 0.97 power factor. I want to aim for this design. That's a very, very good system. If you can achieve this, it's a very good system. How can the designer choose the right motors to ensure the design comply with the desired power factor? Let's start. What's the power factor first? Bad power factor, this is a coffee cup. The bad power factor has a lot of uh, very good, very small coffee. Good power factor has more coffee. I told you, this is what converted into power, and this is what converted into power. However, these both will have almost the same current coming from the cable that you connect. I have the same current. However, this section will be converted to power only in this, this section will be converted to power. That's why I need to have the power factor almost one. To eliminate this, to eliminate this section. To eliminate it. Guys, this is only the power that will be converted into torque when it comes to your motors. So I have an option. I can have a power factor correction. This is required maintenance. If it goes under fault, there's a lot of other issues that will work with it, come with it. It's a one of the solutions. It is one of the solutions. Now, guys, if I have an induction motor has 0 0.9 lagging power factor, and I have a synchronous motor with a 0 0.93 lagging factor, lead, leading factor, the desired power factor is 0 0.97 lagging. So what does this will do for me? As I showed you, the lagging goes up, the reading goes down. So when it comes to my system, one of them 
lagging. One of them is leading. So one of them has different polarity. One of them goes up, one of them goes down, which mean, which mean, what I can do is, instead of keep going up, I can go down. Instead of go up, if lagging, 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 leading, leading, which this would give me, it will reduce my current instead of be the blue line, instead of being here. This required current, remember, this is the current required for this. It's way bigger than the current required for this. And remember, the current goes through the same cable. And only this is converted to torque. Also, the utility get paid only for the real power. That's why there is a set of regulation for the industry and for the residential to maintain a certain range of power factor. You cannot, I don't think there's a utility that will accept you to give him 0 0.7 power factor. Now, modern electrical system. I hope so far you understand how to do maximum demand. You understand for residential. You understand for the residential property. Uh, how to do the maximum demand, how to obtain the data, what's the minimum required, how to choose a feed input with a high security. When I come to the industry, focus on your motoring devices because of the power factor. Now, when I come to modern electric system, renewable energy and storage, I have renewable energy and storage play a very important role when it comes to my system. I have a distributed generation storage system. So I needed to have a bi-directional system. Two ways communication. Control ability, new functionality, high efficiency. Where does the bi-directional come from? This house could have a solar system, has a microgrid. The microgrid, I mean this, both ways. This house could have a solar system as well. Comes in and out. When you have solar circles, you get back, same for this. So you have the bi directional system. Two way communication. Why it's very important to achieve the two way communication? Two way communication because I need to understand if I'm sitting in the control room monitor, I need to understand how much this is giving me or how much is taken. And also, for the advanced system, if I have a two-way communication, this operator, for he, can determine if there's a problem in here. They can send him a message. They can send him a message. Between this time and this time, there's going to be some disturbance. So they can isolate or prepare for the message consequences. Control ability. The two-way communication can lead to advanced control ability. I can, with the acceptance of this outlet, I can control this power input from the control room. Control ability, I need to be able to control this house. This house, I need to be able to control my power in and out to be more advanced. For example, I don't want to give power out if there's no benefit for me. I need to store it. First priority. And then, first priority, the house, then the storage, then the final surface will go to the grid. That's where the control ability, new functionality. What type of new functionality? With the approval of this one, I can turn on and off the air condition from the control room. So if I have a major heat wave hitting, I can reduce the consumption of their air conditioning across the entire city. So I don't melt my network down. That's apply exactly same for 
uh, my building. High efficiency. What's the efficiency? The efficiency is the ratio between the input and the output. So I need to minimize the losses. By having bi-directional, two-way communication, controllability, functionality, I can achieve high. I can supply, instead of supplying this to me, if this guy has sufficient capacity, I can direct it to him by doing the switches. I can open, open to allow this to get through. I can close or open so I can have higher efficiency network because if this girl comes from here all the way down to here, they have higher losses. If it comes like this, we'll have lower losses, which is required, which is equate to higher efficiency. Now, I go back to my building. Where does, the, where does this stand? Where does this stand? Bidirectional. If I have any sort of generation, two-way communication, I need to know, I need to have the ability for this to communicate with the utility and accept communication. I have to be able to control, advanced control my power in and out. I should be able, if I want to go more advanced, to be able to control every item, every single support, either from here or from a remote distance. I could have a new functionality that if there is a fault, if there is a fault in here, automatically this will be isolated and I will remain this on and this will go off. This will give me higher efficiency as well. All this can be done with an advanced logic. And by the way, this now is applicable. It is applicable. If you have a qualified, well-qualified electrical engineer, he or she can design for you an advanced system for your residential property. Same for this one. Same for this one. If I have a fault in here, or in here, or in here, anyway, I should be able to apply exactly what we stated before. Communication backward, two-way communication, control ability, higher efficiency. Same for this. So, when I design my system, I need to take into consideration monitoring ability. Does it have, in the future, you might have a bi direction. Communications. I need to get these communications. I need to be able to control it anywhere I, I, I go or from anywhere I desire, have a new functionality. Functionality to isolate, let's say I have a fault in here. Automatically, this open, this open, isolate automatically, this close, and to maintain, to keep everything on. Now we're almost finished. Let's talk about common mistakes. One of them is the derating factor. Guys, look, this is very neat. This guys, they did separation between every cable as required by many standards. This separation will allow for the heat to be ex exchanged to go out, which means my cable become more sustainable. Go about sustainable. If you overheat the cable, for those who study the, the physical characteristics of the copper, you will damage it with the time. So its life will grow lower, which means it will be unsustainable. Or I can use like this. I'll leave you guys to just this two layout. Now, if I go back to another stand from Australia, I can see that I have a spacing required for the derating factor. Spacing required. I 
want to show you now the current. This is a stuff and unenclosed, enclosed, direct buried, underground, non metallic wiring enclosure. Under spaced, I want to look at the cup. Let's keep following the cup. I can use 120 square mil, 345 mils. Spaced only from the surface by its touching, it will go down to 320. Touching, it goes down to 265. So, unenclosed, it dropped from 345 to 265. 80 amps. 80 amps. Capacity. Can you see? The big difference. So, straight away, I dropped 80 amps because of the way I designed it. Now, enclosed, non metallic wiring enclosure in here. The copper is 250. So, look, 95 amps. Drop down if you want to put it like this. In non metallic enclosure, look at this one 195. So, 345 to enter the kappa, 195. Wow. That's a major drop. So, I have 150 amps drop in current capacity. 150 amps, almost 45% gone. Because I did design it properly. So, if people say to me, 120, 120 square mil cable can take 300 amps and tell them under what condition because it shouldn't allow 200 amp under this standard if it's under this condition look direct buried 380 so i go back hold on a second direct buried 380 Underground non metallic wire enclosure 230, sorry, to 295. Or you put them in a separate one, 320. So for me, if I'm designing the system, I try this arrangement, this arrangement. I try to avoid all these arrangements. I try to go if I can with this one, or maybe with this one. I have to be very, very careful how I choose the cable layout. That's a common mistake. That guess what? To save on the cost of the project. Sometimes who pulled this cable is the civil team. The civil team, they're brilliant, but they don't know this information. It's very important for me as an electric designer to ensure this critical activity is being done by an electro engineer. Also, I need to make sure, guys, I need to make sure that if I have a three-phase cable, three cables to be together, I don't want to have phase A of this circuit with phase B with the other circuit. Now look at this directing factor. Look at this mess between this and this. I haven't seen one like this, but I thought just to put it to show you the difference. Now, that's a very important spacing. And this picture will show you that when you do the design, you have to take into consideration the layout between different surfaces. Where to put the cable. You don't want through the construction to clash or you don't have the space. To separate them. That's why when you have a substation, if you put it far away, you have to take the cable in and out. It's gonna cost you money and you might have an issue like this. Now, with these cables, with a lot of cables in the same vicinity, I need you to focus on this. I need you to focus on this element. 
Durate, in fact, a number of cables. If I have nine cables under this condition, I have 61% only the durate factor. So I lost almost 40% of the current capacity. If I space it with a D, if I have six, that lost 34, in he under the same, that's 84. It's way better. Just by separating it. As I showed you before, the separation, same for this one. Guys, look. 71. If I separate it, 85. That's very critical. Because if you put them like this and you run 100% of the current, you might damage it. You might cause a damage to your cable. So it will be unsustainable, unsecure, and you will lose everything. And the cost to go back and fix it, it could be substantial. And that's the end of our presentations. Thank you for listening. And I hope you learned a bit from it. And we'll see you uh, during our next session. Stay safe.